tonight on BCN Weekly News. For this week's special report, BCN's own Mac Carmack shows her report on Berea's gender-inclusive housing and the issues LGBTIQ plus students are facing on campus. All the details coming next. Also, an update on Berea's COVID-19 numbers coming up. Plus, Sandela's flatbread, the newest concession stand on campus, is still closed. All of this and more coming up soon tonight on BCN Weekly News. Live from BCN Arts Studio in Berea, Kentucky, this is BCN Weekly News. Good evening and welcome back to another newscast of BCN Weekly News. My name is Esteban Reina. For our top story today, our reporter Mac Carmack presents the frustrations and controversies brought up by students living in gender-inclusive housing in this week's special report. Thank you, Esteban. It has come to our attention that many students on campus located in the gender-inclusive housing have felt discriminated against on campus and are requiring more inclusion. The gender-inclusive housing, or GIH, is located in Kentucky Talcott's basement for first-year students and Danforth's basement for first-year and upperclassmen residents. One of the complaints received from students in these areas is feeling left out or not included in regular campus activities. By being excluded in the basement, they feel like they are purposefully being shunned by Berea Housing. I sat down with one of the GIH RAs to discuss some of these issues amongst the campus community. They don't identify with like the gender they were assigned at birth and the sex they were assigned at birth, like their biological sex. So GIH was made for students like trans students, non-binary students, for a place for them to feel comfortable to live because all of the halls on campus are gendered based on sex. Like, when you're not a part of the community, it's hard to understand how we feel about things. Upper class with GIH would really uh, benefit from having its own home. There would be enough space for everyone. We wouldn't have to worry about visitation as it is. That's also something I would recommend though for first year GIH, because I know we have smaller halls on campus that we would be able to fill in first year. As previously stated, the LGBTQ plus community has felt discriminated against on campus this semester. The next steps towards improving this are going to be much more space in the Danforth and Kentucky Talcott residence. As of now, there has been no move towards improving the GIH. However, with much involvement from the students' protest and assertion, there is likely to be more improvements next semester. As of now, that is all the information we have received regarding the gender-inclusive housing situation. This is Matt Carmack reporting live from the Danforth lobby. We will update you about any further information, updates, or events coming your way. Back to you, Esteban. Thank you, Mac. In other news, President Roloff's weekly update pointed out welcoming news on COVID-19 numbers. While Madison County still lies in the red zone, new cases continue to decline since, since mid-September. According to the email, only 50.1% of the county is vaccinated. And in addition, 90% of all employees on campus are currently vaccinated with only a few infections among staff in the labor and grounds departments. This week, uh, this email congratulates the student body as no students had quarantine following the reading period break. The email also reminds everyone to continue to exercise care even if vaccinated. Coming next on BCN Weekly News. Sandela's flatbread, the newest concession stand on campus, is still closed. The details coming next. And after being cancelled for the first time in 145 continuous years, Mountain Day is back in person. Keep tuned for more BCN Weekly News after this break. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. 
end it at feedingamerica.org. Thanks for staying with us. Students at Berea came back this semester to find Tres Habaneros closed and switched with a new business. According to an article from the Pinnacle, Tres Habaneros opened in October 2016 and now, five years later, a stand of Sandela's Flatbread Cafe is supposed to open this semester in the Woods Pennyman Building to replace the Mexican food stamp. But Sandela's Flatbread Cafe is still, has still its doors closed. An email from Dining's general manager Charlie Brubeck to BCNR explains that they are still waiting for equipment to arrive. He adds that delivery was backed up because of the pandemic, and he hopes to receive the equipment and open the restaurant by October 29th. We will keep you up to date with any developments on the restaurant's opening. Tomorrow, Berea College will host its 145th annual Mountain Day at the Forestry Outreach Center. Morning hikes, music and dance performances, and food our reporter Shania Swan has more on this. Each year, Berea College comes together to host its annual celebration known as Mountain Day. This special day serves as an example of Berea's mission to serve the mountains of Appalachia and to preserve the area's heritage. The 2021 celebration of Mountain Day will carry on a tradition that has lasted for 145 years. During this event, all classes are dismissed and labor is canceled except for essential labor. Each year, the event features a schedule of events such as musical and dance performances and a sunrise hike to the Pinnacle Mountain. I had a chance to speak with current Berea College student to give us an insight on what to expect for this year's Mountain Day entertainment. So I'll start with uh, Cesar Latino. Um, and this year we're doing it a little bit differently because of all the COVID restrictions. We can't do partner dancing or couple dancing like we usually do, which to me is a big, Bit of a bummer, but you know what? We're, we're trying to make it work. So everybody, all the dances we're going to do are basically individualized, and we're still doing couple style dances. So we're still going to be doing bachata, um, and we're also still going to be doing like kizomba and um, you know reggaeton, all the styles that we usually do. But it's just going to be all of us on stage as individuals. There'll be no couples. Or now, given some COVID regulations, students are required to bring a mask and bring their student ID, as this year's. Mountain Day will strictly be for Berea students and faculty. Now, if you're interested in signing up for the morning or afternoon Pinnacle Hikes, check your student email for an email that is sent by Collis Robinson for more time slots and more information. Reporting from Berea College campus, my name is Shania Swan with BCN Weekly News. Thank you, Shania. On behalf of our news team, thank you for watching BCN Weekly News. I'm Esteban Reina. For more coverage, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Berea College News Radio and watch our show online at www.bcnewsradio.com. Good night.